And now for something completely basic, the communication model. This is just a diagram with an explanation on how the communication model works. It is very useful if you are a journalist, writer, anybody who communicates. Well, I guess that means everybody. First we draw a circle. And that circle is going to be the sender or the encoder. An encoder is just simply someone who takes a message, a thought, an idea, and encodes it into a, a transmissionable message. How do you encode? Well, encoding can be something as simple as opening your mouth and talking, writing something down, video, audio. Any way you can communicate is an encode. What are we encoding? Our message. As the sender or encoder, we need to create a message or craft a message that we can encode somehow and send it to our end user or receiver or decoder. That message can be anything. It can be funny, it can be sad, it can be information, it can be bullshit, it doesn't matter. Once the message is encoded, it has to be sent. Now how it gets sent, like I said, it's easy as opening your mouth, you can send a letter, broadcast TV, the internet, there's a million ways to send a message. Once the message is received by the receiver, represented by another circle, that receiver decodes the message. Now decoding is an act of just translating the message into something you understand in your brain. Could be reading a letter, listening, watching. It's using your other senses to transmit the information into your brain for processing. Once that message is decoded, the decoder has an opportunity to interact or respond or react to the message itself. How's this done? It's done with feedback. Feedback could be a letter to the editor, a rebuttal video, uh, yelling and screaming at each other, making no progress whatsoever. There's always a way to give feedback. That's a pretty clean model. But life ain't clean, baby. In between sending the message, receiving the message, and then sending feedback, there's the possibility of something called static. Static is any kind of interference with the message. It can be something physical. It can be something mental. For example, static in the old TV days because of interference from radio towers, the neighbor's trees, whatever, and it looked like snow. But in this case, we have several different kinds, one being physical static. That would be someone who doesn't turn their computer on or their TV or their radio or gets their mail. Addressing that is really difficult. However, the best suited people for that are the marketing people. It's their job to get the message that someone else needs to read their message. Then there are things like bad coding. If I encode something improperly, such as poor coding, bad writing, poor vocabulary, the end user, decoder, isn't going to have a clue what the message really is, what I'm trying to say. There can be emotional resistance to the message. And if I don't like you, it's going to be really hard for me to pay attention to you. So the editor's job is to clear up the static by cleaning up vocabulary, editing the audio, cleaning up the uh, computer code. An editor is absolutely essential. Although the job can be done by the same person doing the encoding. If you want your message to be received clearly, your job is one the sender, to encode the message. Two, have an editor check for static or interference that would inhibit decoding from the receiver. Then the receiver has the option of sending you feedback. They too have to work on eliminating the static. So it's a pretty simple feedback loop. Sender, message, receiver, feedback, static in the middle. So that's the basic communication model.